Hello, social workers, mental health professionals, and change agents. Welcome to another episode of season eight of the Social Work Rants podcast. I'm your host, Bash Moreno. Saludos a todos. Greetings, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, tapping it. Wherever you're watching or listening to this podcast, I appreciate all the love and support. Gracias a todos por su apoyo. Continue uh, uh, following the podcast along on, on social media, on Instagram, at the Social Work Rants podcast. Uh, yes, I'm on Twitter, X, whatever Elon calls it, at Social Work Rants and Facebook, a.k.a. Meta. Uh, type in the Social Work Rants podcast, hit that like button. Uh, of course, the YouTube, hit that red subscribe button. Uh, and however you listen to the podcast, uh, rate, share, download the podcast episodes or on whatever podcast out, outlet you listen to. Um yeah, we're gonna keep rocking along. Um, this this uh, Friday of uh, this recording, uh, when this airs, it'll be uh, social work social work appreciation month, social work month. So, uh, for those that listen, Mar- March March first, Happy Social Work Month is our month to shine. Nobody can, like Kanye says, nobody can tell me nothing <laughs> for the month. That includes my wife, my kids, my dad. <laughs> like, leave me alone. It's my my month to shine. So it's our month to shine. So uh, uh, appreciate all the um, the hard work that all our social workers do, mental health workers do. Uh, our party, y'all keep keep on keeping on. And and uh, yeah, uh, be, before I introduce my guests, uh, this this podcast is not to be used. Uh, as a replacement of therapy or any type of mental health counseling. Uh, if you need assistance, by all means, call uh, 988, call 911. Uh, if you have a therapist, call your therapist. If you call a psychiatrist, call your, you have a psychiatrist, call your psychiatrist. Um, it's okay not to be okay, but definitely get the help that you need. Um, so, this, so this Friday, the first and the second, I'll be in Atlanta, or I like to say Bass Atlanta, uh, for the Millennial Social Work Conference, and uh, somebody who else was going to be there and presenting, uh, uh, Teresa Timmons, LCSW. How you doing? Hello, hello. Uh, thanks for having me today. I'm excited about the conference. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to go last year, and then uh, an opportunity at Dallas came came up out of nowhere and took advantage of that so this year i'll, I'll make it up and be there uh, in person and, and presenting so i'm looking forward to that yeah uh for for people who don't know who you are what you do in our wonderful interesting fascinating field of social work let people know who you are so i am an lcsw licensed in new york um other states coming soon this year um and I currently own a private practice. I also do some consulting for an employee assistance program uh, firm. And uh, I run groups. I do individual therapy. I supervise therapists. <laughs> I am I am deep in the realm of therapy. Cool. Uh, and how long you been doing that? So I've had my private practice, Timmons Therapy Solutions, if anybody's asking, um, for two years officially. um, But I've been working on that since uh, the middle of 2020. um, But I officially launched and really got it going um, at the beginning of 2022. Uh, It was a huge step in the right direction for me. Um, It was the right time. And I serve black and brown clients um, because they need a space. Um, There are so many spaces for everyone else. And oftentimes we feel isolated uh, in those spaces or unheard in those spaces. And so I said, why not create a space that's especially for uh, black and brown clients who I can identify with and um, they can identify with me and feel safe. Um, so that's my, that's my focus in my practice. Uh, are you taking clients currently? I am. I am. Um, I have a few slots, um, but I'm also hiring staff soon. So 
there will be a waiting list that won't be long. So um, if people want to reach out and connect and get on the waiting list or work with me, um, they can reach out. They can go to my website, timmonstherapysolution.org um, and the, hit that contact us button and they can connect with me there, set up a consultation. Cool. Yeah, just uh, definitely wanted to get that out of the way because you know, people are struggling. People need uh, resources as, as much as uh, they can and and uh, help each other out along the way. Um, so, yeah, how, how did you get started on wanting to do the private practice? Um, I've, I'm frozen, but anyway, I'll keep talking. Uh, I'll come back. Um, so I've been in the field for 15 years. I've done everything from foster care, clinic work. Um, I worked in the hospital system for a really long time in the psych ER and also in an intensive outpatient treatment program. Um, and there just came a point where I was like, you know, I really want to service the clients that I want to service in the way that I want to service them. And so I was like, well, in all of these pre-organized places, they give you clients. They tell you who you're going to see. Um, and so I realized that I needed to create a practice of my own um, so that I could see the people I wanted to see, how I wanted to see them and use the methodologies that I wanted to use and and not feel like I was connected or bogged down by someone else's design. No, that, that makes a, a lot of sense. And, uh, I, and, and, and it's no, important that you, you, you notice that for yourself and, and kind of did that and, and, and pursued that. You say like the beginnings of the idea started in 2020. Describe that process for somebody who wants to go into private, who's thinking about private practice or might start one or about to start one. Uh, like what was that process for you, especially during 2020 uh, to where you had to officially start in 2022? Yeah, um, it was, it was the perfect time. Um you know, people were really figuring out that they had to tend to their mental health. They were really figuring out that therapy could be anywhere with anyone at any time. And so um, the mobilization of teletherapy mm -hmm. was really instrumental in that because I live currently in the Bronx and, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I live in the Bronx and you it's I can if I'm seeing people in person, I could see people in the Bronx or people that have cars. Mm -hmm. But if it's virtual, I could see people in Buffalo. I could see people in Albany. I could see people in Brooklyn. I could see people all across New York right. and just reach a larger population. And so I really honed into that skill where I was like, you know what? I could connect with somebody in person, virtually. We're going to connect. I am very astute. I'm very clinically savvy. Being in the psych ER was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because that sharpened those clinical skills to a point where I know what's happening with people. I know that body language. Even if I don't see your hands, I know what's happening with your hands. <laughs> so um, I tried out a company um, that was really uh, spearheading teletherapy um, through an insurance company. And I worked with them for a little while and I figured out how to start building my own practice from there. I was just like, you know what? I could do this. Okay, I need to do this. I need to get this in place. I need to get, you know, I need to get my name um, released as my name. I need to... Right. Um, figure out who I'm going to see. I'm going to figure out, you know, what, what makes me stand out? What makes me special? Um, figuring out how to build a website, <laughs> which was an endeavor in itself. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, YouTube I'm university will that. save your life. <laughs> It'll save your life every time. Um, and so I really just had to take it step by step and talk to colleagues that were already doing it and see what they do and how could I tweak it? How could I make it better? How could I make it mine? Um, and 
And then it was, well, how do I market? And I am somebody who is not very social media oriented. I don't really use it. And people are like, you got to get on this social media. I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Which is something I still struggle with. I'm not going to lie to anybody and tell you it's easy. It's something that you can get into. If you're not already like totally into it, you're going to struggle. But yeah. you have to get out there. You have to put yourself out there um, and, and and you know, make a fool of yourself a little bit. Um, <laughs> and so it was really just figuring out, you know, in social work school, they really don't talk about business. Um, At all. They teach, you, <laughs> they teach you how to be, you know, clinicians, or they teach you how to be caseworkers, or they teach you how to do these, these, these certain skills. Yeah. But some of the professors were private practice owners. Right. And they never talked about business, how to create that business. They're just like, I own a private practice. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you get there? Exactly. Because <laughs> people want that. And a lot of people want that clinical piece, right? But they want it in private practice because the clinic is a beast. Nonprofits are a beast. Mm-hmm. And so... So, and, and it's so, um, bureaucratic and it's like, make this money, see these clients, make this money, make this money. And, and so you don't learn how to create a successful business. It really has to come from you figuring out the resources. I had a business coach for a little while, um, you know, really just figuring out how to build it from the ground up. And it took a while. It took, you know, a lot of work. I'm still working on it. I'm still tweaking. I'm still building. I'm still growing. Um, But, you know, when I really, really started and honed it in and wrangled everything in in 2022, um, things have been great and steady since then. Um, And I'm very, very pleased with where it's going. That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. Um, what what's some some tips you you would give somebody regarding that? You mentioned you know, the website, you mentioned marketing, or trying to get clients and, and adapting to social media that's like constantly changing and it's like you know, with <laughs> algorithms and all all this stuff and AI is like kind of blowing everything up and it's like so, like how do you deal with all that? Uh, um. I would say knowing when to ask for help, (laughs) knowing what you don't know doesn't work. Stop. Um, (laughs) Knowing what works, knowing when you need help, knowing how to ask for help, knowing how to access the resources that you need. um, That would be my biggest recommendation for people because like I said, in social work school, they don't teach you that. And so just trying to find it within yourself is sometimes just holding you back. And so there are so many really good um, social work business coaches who own private practices that are willing to sell their services, of course. Right. Um, but it's so necessary. It's so helpful um, because they give you the ins and outs because they've done it. You know, these are people that have had their private practice for 10 years plus at this point um, or five years and it's been really, really successful. And they know how to really get clients, how to get that marketing going, how to get those public speaking engagements, how to get, you know, the marketing down, how to get these SEOs and get your website to be at the top of that Google search. Right. Because you got to have those keywords. And and all of those things are nuances that if you just want to see people in therapy, you're like what am I doing with this? What am I supposed to do? Um, And so having, you know, and trial and error, trial and error, because you're going to make mistakes and you just have to learn from them. It doesn't mean, oh man, I made a mistake. Now I have to shut down my practice. This means how do you pivot? How do you, you know, move through it? How do you learn from it? How do you adjust? That's what I would say. No, I I love those those, those tips and uh, myself. I like so you just reminded me. I, I I saw my website earlier. That I saw the mistake, and now you reminded me. I gotta still fix that mistake on my website. So. 
Yeah. It's, it's, it's a uh, constant work in progress. Yeah, absolutely. It is definitely a, a, a work in progress. Uh, and it's especially, uh, you know, what grad schools don't teach you and you got to find it. And uh, who's out there that, that that knows what they're doing, that, you know, see results and kind of, like you said, you got a coach. I, I got a coach now and like, I'm, like reach out to somebody else and gave me some tips. So it's like, you know, it's, uh, we all we kind of all in this to, together and still try to make some money somehow, some way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, let's let's talk about this conference. On, on you know, shout shout out to Erica and the team at at uh, Millennial Social Work, uh, you know, for having us. You know, we're, you know, we're both uh, presenting. Uh, we're both gonna be there in in person. Um, to let people know what what do you what are you uh presenting like like your reasoning of going down there? Um, so I'm going to be presenting about holistic therapy. Um, I have a holistic practice. I use a lot of holistic practices in therapy with my clients. Um, I recommend them out for stuff. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that to the table for social workers as an option because that's also something that's not taught in social work school. Um, they're like, oh, it's not evidence-based practice, but it is, right? Because if our ancestors used it and it worked and it healed them and it helped them, you know, one of the things that people don't really pay attention to, but it's ever present is energy, right? And and when I talk about energy with clients, I'm like, you ever walk in a room with two people that don't like each other? Oh, you feel it. You know it. The moment you walk in the room, it's like, ooh, something's happening here. Something's a brew. Or someone who's having a secret affair with somebody at work, you know, you can feel it. It's the energy exchange, right? Um, and that's undeniable. And it's and when you're talking about moving energy through your body, you're talking about, you know, um, what energy does, where does it stay? How does it stay in your body? That nervous energy, that anxious energy, that angry energy, whatever it is, how does it um, affect your mental health? And so I take that mind, body, and spirit approach with clients because I'm like, if one part is off, the other two are not far behind. Um, and it's only when you tap into all of those things that you're able to really get a full picture of your client a full picture of what's happening with your client and how to best help them. Um, so I'll be presenting on that. Um, I'll also be on the panel on Saturday, which is about nonprofits. Um, so I'm excited to talk about that as well because I've worked in many nonprofits in my career. So um, I have a lot of insight into nonprofits. Cool. Look, looking forward to that. Looking forward to uh... No, me and you face to face in person. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I'll also be vending. Um, yeah, oh, snap. I'll also be uh selling t shirts, bookmarks that you could color, um, and something else, essential oil blends. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna be very busy. Oils. Very busy. <laughs> yeah, then I'll I'll be uh presenting about uh. Narr narrative therapy uh, using storytelling to live it, using storytelling to live in your purpose so uh definitely be sharing uh my my story uh grief and loss from a narrative therapy perspective and uh we all got a story to tell and in, in grad school they teach us we 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 all uh, are uh experts of our own lives so kind of like give some expertise uh, based on my story, so and my my first uh, public speaking, well, in person in a year. So looking for look looking forward to that. So, um, yeah, and it's not going to be that hot in Atlanta. So, uh, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about that. <laughs> so, uh. Yet, um, so you say you live you live in in uh, the Bronx. What what is going on in my my borough? I see it on the news all the time. It's like, especially on the four train place. recently. <laughs> yeah, there was a leg on the flat on the tracks. I think. 
Yeah, just a random uh, le human leg. Oh, on yeah. One, on 167, right? <laughs> oh, was it 167? Well, I, I thought saw it a was, picture um... of 167. I'm like, I'm like why, why gotta be my old stop? <laughs> I want to say that it was um, Mount Eden stop. Well, there was a shooting that happened in Mount Eden. There was a, a leg there found too. <laughs> Oh, Mount Eden is a crazy place. <laughs> I know. <but laughs> that, you know doing, doing some social work and be having to go to Bronx, Lebanon. So I know about Mount Eden. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I'm in the Bronx. Um, I've been in the Bronx for 12 years, 13 years. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. A lot has, has happened in that time, and it continues to happen. And uh, yeah, for those that have been listening to the podcast, you know, like we've been rambling about uh, Mayor Adams since taking over. So <laughs> yeah, I could go back to previous episodes about about clubbing <laughs> Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the club promoter. He's not the mayor. <laughs> so yeah, so. Uh, so we talked. We talked offline that we both graduated from from uh, Fordham and, and and walked to the same, <laughs> the yes. same graduation, the same ceremony. At uh, what a the theater what a small MSG. world. Yes, small world. Yeah, um, yeah. I um, I went from two thousand seven to two thousand nine, um, but I finished in December, and so. For whatever reason, they don't have a winter graduation. But uh, I walked May uh, 2010. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a, a I mean, I that was my second graduation at MSG, which mm. I'm just like, ah, apparently that's my place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember people were complaining that they were doing it there. Cause I think where they usually do it at, they were like, constructing it or like refurbishing doing something to it so they needed a new place to do it and i was all all hype, hyped up about yeah the, about the theater at msg so every time when i've gone there for concerts i'm like this is where i graduated at <laughs> so i'm <laughs> over <laughs> so I, I was You're like i graduated here i did i did the rick flair strut on, on the stage after they butchered my name and they called my name out and like they butchered it and like, i did i did did my little dance and yelled out my son's name my, my son was 18 months at the time so like just oh, that's celebrating awesome. celebrating with the fam and, and uh it's a, a a good time um, much relief too i mean i still had a couple months to go for my internship but at least i was able to walk and uh be done i don't know how i did it but <laughs> i did it <laughs> yeah yeah it was i uh, like i said off uh air that i went on saturdays <laughs> for two years i sacrificed saturdays in my 20s when i was you know supposed to be living my best life and partying and having a good time and friday night if I go out, I'm going to be sad <laughs> at school all day because I'm there from a little before nine. I had an 845 class and I was living in Flatbush at the time. And so I needed to get on that train early to get to Lincoln Center. And so and I was there till after five. And that was my life for two years. And I made that sacrifice to get that degree. But I wouldn't recommend it to people. <laughs> um, I did it because I had to work full time, you know, uh, and it was what it was, but I made it. And, you know, I'm 15 years status post that. So it couldn't have been too bad. I made it. <laughs> but but that but that's something that's not nor, not really talk, talked about too much is like, you no, know, we actually you know, make sacrifices. You know, I, I you know, I had my son during that time going to school and like literally I did it it's funny you got a long commute and my Saturdays for one of my internships I actually I was living in Jersey and had to go all the way to uh Forest Hills Queens on a Saturday for 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 my internship and so not only dealing <laughs> with New Jersey transit I got to deal with the MTA on a Saturday so I could 
you know, it's it's not not fun, but did we had to do what we had to do and you know, work it full time and we had to make make it work. So uh for all the MSW students you know, currently listen to, like, you know, sacrifices gotta be made to get the degree at the end of the day. There there's you no know, money to be made in, in the profession and, and uh you're gonna be you can do whatever you want to do with the the degree. You don't have to you don't necessarily gotta be licensed, but you know, you just do what you you're passionate on, on on doing so uh it, it just sacrifices just at times just got to be made and go from brooklyn to on a saturday all the way to to Lincoln center that was, whew, that's not that's not fun it was a ride <laughs> it was a ride <laughs> yeah a, a Lincoln center is, is 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 like in the middle of manhattan but still not the easiest place in terms of like commuting to get to depending where where you're coming from so it's like yeah it's uh for those who don't know nothing about new york and uh <laughs> mta who list the horrible mta <laughs> that yeah. we gotta we had to deal with <laughs> i don't i don't miss that not li- me neither li- living in uh no longer living in new york i don't i don't miss the train <laughs> i don't miss a lot of Ooh. things in new york <laughs> I still live in New York, but I don't ride the train. <laughs> I'm over it. I think I rode the train for the recently, like December, this past December, for the first time in in like three years. I was like, "Oh, what's that?" <laughs> <laughs> it's an like, adventure. I was like, "I guess I take the train it's only for a couple stops." But all right. <laughs> but yeah. Um, where can people uh, you know reach out to you? No, no, get that you no know, website again. You no, know, for for people looking just for a resource or somebody who's listening or watching that. Oh yeah, I can find make the decision to seek out you no know, therapy and and kind of get those tidbits out. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, you could find me on my website, uh, Timmons Therapy Solutions dot org. Or you could follow me on Instagram, Timmons underscore therapy underscore solutions. Um, yeah, I'm I'm around. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're pretty responsive. Um, we'll answer within 24 hours of your email or your reach out. If you request a consultation, it's accepted immediately. All of the consultation uh, alerts come to my phone. So it will be addressed immediately. Um, if you just want to reach out and say hi, you could DM me, you could reach out on Instagram, um, say hi, say you heard, heard me on the podcast and I was amazing. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, and if you're going to be at the conference this weekend, stop by, uh, my vending table, stop by my presentation, uh, sit in the front row of the panel and say, Hey girl, I heard you on the podcast. Um, yeah, um, I just, you know, I really love connecting with people and and just, you know, taking that journey with people in therapy is so important to me. Um, I tell people all the time, I've been a therapist all my life. People come to me and tell me their business all the time <laughs> um, since I was a kid. So um, they always wanted me to be a therapist. That was the universe telling me that's what I needed to do. Um, and so here I am doing it. it. (laughs) Hello, it used to be free. So yeah, yeah, please. Um, like I said, follow me on Instagram, look at, look for me at my website, reach out to me, connect with me. And if you're at the conference, say hi. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, obviously I'll be at the conference. I also will have my poetry books on, on hand, trying through pain, how to maximize your full potential in hard times. And also a couple copies of the uh, Latinx and Social Work Volume Two. I'm one of the co-authors. Um, I'm actually at my uh, my talk. I'm actually going to be uh, raffling off uh, one each of, of the books during, during my talk. So uh, come by, saying hi, uh, and, and just uh, looking forward to bringing that New York energy to to Atlanta. <laughs> I might throw the X yeah. up. You see me with the X up. <laughs> that's, that's me. So, uh, it's, but yeah. that Atlanta energy is 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 um. Oh yeah, it's definitely it's catchy. Yeah, it's definitely. I've been there, been to Atlanta a couple of times, and yeah, 
you you stay for a couple of days, you you come back with a word or two or <laughs> or yeah, some sounds. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. All right, Teresa. It's a pleasure having you on and, and uh see you in the in the A. All right. I'll see you this weekend. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for us to meet in person at the conference and I will hop into your presentation. I'm right, looking forward to it. Be well.